ClickUp Automation is an exciting feature and in this video we will be breaking down how to use it, where to find it and how to make most out of this powerful functionality inside your ClickUp account. So let's dive into this. Before switching to ClickUp and showing you how to do actions inside there, let me tell you a very simple concept that we're going to be following when building any ClickUp automation in this video. Automation consists of two different parts. The first one is called a trigger. The trigger is essentially an action or an update inside ClickUp that, as it's named, triggers the automation or the second part, which is action to be performed. Now, as we go move on to the second part, which is action, action is basically that repetitive and manual work that you are doing and that you want ClickUp to do for you automatically. So it's as simple as that. Now, in order to access ClickUp automation, you need to log in into your ClickUp account and navigate to either your space, folder or list inside your ClickUp. Now, automations are available on either of these levels, right? So you can create automations on your space level, on your folder or list level. Just be careful where you click this button because when you create automation on the space level, that's gonna be applying to all the tasks or all the folders and lists that are located in that space. The same applies to the folder level. It works some sort of like a waterfall. If you create it at the very top, it's gonna flow down to all the other levels. So if you create it on the folder level, then it's going to apply to all the lists inside that folder. In order to find all the automations that you have in place, you need to navigate to, again, either space, folder or list, depending on where you want to create that automation and create on this little button, which is now looks like lightning. Prior to that, it looked like a bigger button for automations and then click on manage automations at the bottom over here. Now, in this pop-up window, you will see all the active and also inactive automations that you have in that specific location. ClickUp makes it easier right now to switch between different spaces or different locations where you see your automation. So you can now easily navigate to your space automations, to your folder automations, or to your list automations by using this drop-down at the top left corner of the pop-up window. What ClickUp also did is with the recent update, they helped us manage the automations much, much easier with this filters over here. So now you can filter your automations by different triggers, conditions, and also action items. That makes it much easier when you have not only one, two, or three automations inside your location, but let's say you have 20 or 50 automations inside a single location. Now, before we go and we add new automations and we see how that functionality works, let me show you an important Part. Click on the usage button here at the top of the pop-up window and you will see a couple of numbers or statistics over here. What this shows you is it shows you all the limits that you have for ClickUp automations or as, call, as they call them actions as part of your ClickUp subscription. Make sure that when building ClickUp automations, you're counting how many actions is required for that automations because the last thing you want to happen is to build hundreds of automations and then just run out of this actions over here here. Now, believe me, I've done this myself and additional automation credits actually cost a lot of money inside ClickUp. So you better count those automations before creating all those complexities inside ClickUp so that you do not struggle with the same issues I had within my ClickUp spaces I built. Let's go back to the manage tab and over here, we're going to click on add automation. As we said, the concept is very simple. We have trigger on the left, action on the right. So we're going to click on this drop down here and you will see a lot a lot of different triggers available to you. Now, over time, ClickUp added a lot of flexibility to triggers. Prior to that, a couple of years ago, it was not like that, so it was much more rigid. Right now, you can choose a lot of triggers from here. Uh, let me show you three most commonly used triggers that I see people use in their workspace. The first one is the status changes. It works very simply. You can just select which status you want to be the sort of like the source status from where a task gets moved. And then two status is going to be, let's say, in review. Now, when status moves from pending in review, you can perform any action on the right hand side. Now, it works absolutely the same way. You click the drop down, gives you all the options for the actions and you select which action do you want to perform. Important thing to mention here is that you can also add filters. So with adding the action, you can click on the plus button over here and it will add conditions, meaning that 
when the status changes and when SME is, let's say me, I want this automation or this action to be performed. Now, this things can become very, very bust. You can change, you can select the condition to be the priority, the due date, the tag or the custom field. So let's say when status changes and the specific custom fields equals to this value, perform this action. So again, this can become pretty, pretty robust. Now, let me show you the second most commonly used trigger, which is custom field changes. You can go crazy with this. I've built a, a lot of very, very interesting automations using this trigger. The reason for that is because you have many, many different variations of what triggers ca trigger can look like. It can be the change of the drop down field. It can be the change of the checkbox. So by clicking the checkbox, you trigger the automation, or it can be even the relationship field, as you can see over here here when new relationship is added to the task perform this action and now the last piece uh, or the last type of trigger that I saw most commonly used in many ClickUp automations is with the due date so you click due date arrives or due date changes as well and over here when the due date arrives now we can perform the action again can be very very powerful when you're trying not to miss the deadlines or when you're trying to perform an action in the future saying when this due date arrives I'm gonna put this for after tomorrow so when after tomorrow arrives ClickUp should perform this and this action. Now, as we review this commonly used triggers for the actions, you can really do a lot of things here. First of all, you can look through the full list by clicking the drop down here and just scrolling down and seeing all the actions in here. You have actions related to communication as ClickUp added their chat feature. You can now send channel messages. You can change followers on the task. You can add comments to the task. You can also apply different templates. Uh, you can apply task templates. You can create create new lists, you can create new SAP tasks for those tasks. So again, this can become pretty, pretty robust. In terms of the most commonly used actions, obviously this is the change of the SNE and then also the change of the due dates and update of the custom fields that you can see over here, set custom field. It's also worth mentioning that ClickUp has some native integrations within this action. So if you scroll to the very bottom of this pop-up window over here, you will see that there are some integrations mentioned here. So you have GitHub, Google Calendar, HubSpot, Slack and Twilio. Now, they might not be as robust as you would do yourself using a different integration layer or platform like Zapier, Make or Power Automate, but it can be good enough or enough just for your use case or for your workflow. So again, you can use this feature inside ClickUp without any need to go and build some more complex automation or integration scenarios outside of ClickUp platform. Now, let me share with you an advanced tip of how you can use ClickUp automation not only to perform actions inside ClickUp, but also to outsource those actions to different platforms. Because if I'm honest with you, many of the actions that we perform through our business processes are not inside ClickUp. Now, ClickUp we use for managing work or tracking the tasks, but when it comes to actually sending documents for signature or when we want to create new Google Drive folder or to create a new Google presentation or Google slide presentation from the template, ClickUp is not going to be able to help us with their native ClickUp automation. So in order for us to create something more advanced, let me show you how we do this. We're gonna go into ClickUp and here we're gonna change, again, select one of the triggers that we discussed previously. There are many of them, but for now I will be using just the status changes. Imagine that the task moves through different statuses in our ClickUp list, right? And each status represents a different part of our business process. So one of the parts of the business process requires us to send a DocuSign envelope, which happens inside the DocuSign platform, not ClickUp. So we're gonna change the status from in progress to uh, we're going to select the status here, accepted, right? So when the status changes from in progress to accepted, what we want to do, we want to create a, or create a DocuSign envelope and also send it to the person. So ClickUp doesn't let us do this with their simple or a built-in actions. So we want to do, we want to find a webhook. So what a webhook is, if you think about this, it's an action that results in a trigger for another automation or another integration. So because we're going to be using with this webhooks a different integration platform, like I mentioned Zapier, make or power automate, we can trigger those more advanced and more custom actions in those platform by using this action in trigger. So again, we can click on create webhook, we can give it a name, paste the URL of the webhook that you're going to get from your Zapier, make or power automate or any other integration platform. And I usually prefer to add description as well, because when you have a lot of webhooks created over time, you want to know which ones refer to which process or to which part of the process. And again, as you complete these fields over here, you can click on create webhook and that's going to create your webhook in 
here. Now this way what happens is when the action is performed over here is a trigger inside ClickUp. ClickUp is gonna send notification to a different platform which is gonna in its turn perform the more complex and more advanced action involving different platforms like I mentioned DocuSign, maybe you're using Dropbox Sign, wherever the case might be. Maybe you want to create a Google Drive folder or a new document on your Google Drive. Whatever the case is that is aligned with your workflow and you'll be able to perform in an integration platform rather than just being limited by ClickUp actions that it presents here in this drop down. So this becomes extremely powerful and you can use this together with a status changes trigger or any other trigger that is available to us in here. Now, and as we've discussed all this ClickUp automation details, I know it's exciting to jump straight into building things and start using ClickUp automations. But before you do that, let me share a couple of struggles that I had with ClickUp automations so you do not fall into the same pit that I did. The first one, start with the fundamentals. Start with your business process. So before you create all those multiple automation ideas that you have in your head and you actually start using them, make sure that ClickUp aligns with the business process or the workflow that you have in place. Again, this is how you build a building, right? Or a house. You first lay down a firm foundation and then you start putting all the building blocks on top of that. So the same happens with automation. Automation are just building blocks. The foundation is going to be your workflow or the business process. And the better you align your ClickUp structure, with your business process before building automations, the more robust and the better the system is going to perform and your team is just going to adopt it much, much faster. The second thing is do the work manually first and automate. I've done this myself. And again, when you start building automation without actually knowing how to do the work manually first, automation is not going to stick with your team or with your system for a long time. Believe me, I've done this myself. And there were times when we built something that, was, that seemed so easy to be done manually. But again, just because we didn't do that work manually long enough and we didn't realize all the intricacies of how to complete that step, we didn't give the right instructions to the automation so it performs this action correctly as well. And again, the worst thing that can happen is that when you build the automation, it works, but it does the work incorrectly. And now you have not only trouble to have to troubleshoot the automation, but you also have to redo manually the work that automation did incorrectly. And the last piece is always test your automation automation before starting to use it. And again, there are some automations that are very simple. You're just changing the assignees or maybe you're just updating the due dates. But make sure to give it a couple of simple tasks before you mention or notify your team members and saying we're not doing this manual anymore. Automation is going to take care of this. Because again, the worst scenario is that automation is not doing that work correctly or it breaks or it gives you some errors. And now your team is not expecting that first of all. And second of all, they have to go troubleshoot the automation and also correct all the mistakes that automation did. So again, save yourself some time and your team some, some headaches and make sure that you test, even some simple tests are enough, your automation before actually launching it. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video very, very soon.